Prepare to step into a world where imagination knows no bounds as we present Legends Loot and Lore. Join your hosts, Andrew and Joe, the dice-rolling dynamic duo who will guide you every step of the way into the realm of Dungeons & Dragons. From crafting narratives to character creation, this podcast is your gateway to becoming the hero of your own story. Whether you're a new adventurer or a seasoned traveler seeking new insights, Legends, Loot, and Lore has something for everyone. After the episode, visit our website at www.legendslootandlore.com for even more resources and exclusive content. And if you're as passionate about this adventure as we are, help support our quest at legendslootandlore.supercast.com. Embark on this odyssey with us and let the echoes of ancient tales guide you toward a destiny filled with limitless possibilities. Roll for initiative, because your adventure begins now. Welcome, everyone, back to Legends, Loot, and Lore. Pull up a chair, sit down as we create another character. Today we are creating a spellcaster, and we are going to randomize much of it and, and talk through all the different options, etc. So this will be an exciting opportunity to figure out how to build a spellcaster. Uh, we don't know... We don't know what type of, what class of spellcaster or what race it's going to be yet. So we've got all sorts of uh, adventures to choose from, and we'll see see where that goes. Are, are you excited, Joe? I'm very excited. I I, I was uh, at the end of the last episode. I was unfortunate we didn't have enough time because I was like, I was in the zone. I was like, all right, let's keep doing. It. I was almost jonesing it. Yeah, this is this is going to be this is going to be a lot of fun. I I love character creation. Once you best part, I think once you start. Creating characters, you tend to just keep creating new ones, <laughs> which you never get to play. So, um, and the interesting thing is for me is like I tend to DM a lot, so I have a lot of ideas for characters, but I intentionally do not create the character because I'm like, if I sit in there, I'm gonna angst over it even more. So I just kind of ignore them until I know I need to make a character for something. Yeah, I just I can't stop. I'm like, ooh, what if I try this? What if I try that? <laughs> so I, I I build all sorts of characters based on based on comic book characters, based on other things I see in movies. You and should books. share some of those with the Discord. Maybe, maybe I will. I, I've got a I've got like almost forty different characters. Do you really sitting in sitting in D and D Beyond? Yeah, that would be really cool. I would think you should share those with the Discord. That'll be part maybe of the uh, Discord content. Maybe I will. I'll, I'll post some maybe some character sheets up there, like one or two a week or a month or something like that. Just random to, characters. Yeah, why not? Okay, maybe I will. So let's, let's everybody write in and request that he share his characters, please. That's right. Thank you. Um, let's dive in. We let's do well, this. well. We have to talk about. This week's D and D. Well, actually, we advanced the storyline a little bit. We this did. Week. Just, it was just great. just a wee bit. So let's let's talk about it. So basically, you guys uh, finally were able to reach the location that Varnum the White had been running to, and when you got there, uh, you guys were exploring the outliers of what looked to be a temple built inside a mountain. Um, nothing happened while you were exploring the outliers, mm -hmm. but then you go inside the temple of the mountain and in the very first narrow chamber, I thought this was a tomb, not a temple. Well, it's a mix because it was originally a temple where this guy was, right? I can't think of his name off the top of my head. And then when Didarius he died, yeah, and then you when you he died, it? it became his tomb as well. I thought, so, there, I thought there was a lot of other people buried in there from what, from the description you've given us, there's there's been a lot of, there's a lot of bones and things in this. Well, so were, they, were they all put in there after he died? Yeah, or? because there these these are this is an ancient tomb where people have died trying to adventure into, like you guys are doing now. Right. So lower level people have died. Going I in see. There. So but that's but why. I thought, a, but I thought you said there were there were like um, <sighs> niches and things like where where people were buried in the wall. No, no. So that's what I was about to say. In the very first room that yeah. you walk into, yeah. there are stone statues. Okay. And they all turn to look at you as you walked in. Okay. And I believe it was you who got the only person who, who made the save, or was it Steve? I forget who it was, but somebody made the save, and they were the No, it was Bill. It was Bill. Bill was the only one who made the save, then it was said... Uh, not to look into the darkness. Mm -hmm. And if you actually had turned and looked at one of these statues that had turned and looked at you, you, uh, 
I forget what it was. It was a wisdom save, and there was some kind of penalty that lasted for like an hour. And it would it was really good. And then Bill, yeah, it was Bill because I remember I texted him what it was, and he didn't think to say anything until you got and now until I read it. The cowls over the uh, the statues' faces in would create a darkness, and the information he got basically said, "Don't uh, don't look into the darkness." Interesting. So. So we so we got through that. We got room. through that little bit of a, right. of, a, of a trap, and then you get into the next room, and there's a chimera on the ground in yes. the tiles, and it a was mosaic, fighting a chimera um, mosaic exactly. And as you walked into the room and crossed about to the halfway point, yes, it came up. All the tiles came out and basically attacked you. Mm-hmm. Now, the interesting thing about this room is that is part of the adventure, but. It was just the chimera. And if I just left you guys alone with the chimera, it would have been done and over with in the snap of the fingers. Right. So I came up with a little thing, and I, I should have made them a little more powerful. Every time you hit the chimera and took five hit points away from it, part of the tiles broke off of it right. and started flying around. And then as it flew around, it's it couldn't do anything in the current round. Right, but at the next round, it it was part of the initiative order. All it had was one thing: it immediately dove at a creature, usually the closest one, and attacked it. And it was a standard. I think I, I think it was three hit points. It was e three only. hit points. It was unblockable. You couldn't stop it. There was no way. But it was only three hit points. And I should have made that close to like seven, and I should have made their armor class a little higher than what I did. But doing what I did, it was it was great. I mean, I, it was a little something special. It was something different. If I really wanted to amp up the difficulty, I should have done that. Yeah, but it was fun. It was fun nonetheless. It was it was it was a good time killing another creature and and for me, it was like the first time that I was really completely experimenting with my own. Like that was the creature that was in the game, right. and I was cr- experimenting with like, all right, let's toughen this up. Let's do this. Let's do that. So for me, it was a lot of fun because it was like, hey, this is thematic. Absolutely. Well, that's I mean, and and that's what you've if, if you're going to use the the material, the the books and things from Wizards of the Coast or, or from from anyone that creates it. Like if, if your party is stronger than if you got a really strong party and the the encounters are seeming to be too easy, you can you can definitely beef them up by making the character stronger, like making the, the enemy stronger or adding other enemies. I mean there's all sorts of ways of of kind of modifying the the encounters to to make it a little bit more interesting for the players instead of the killing a dragon in 18 seconds <laughs> exactly no that's exactly what it is yeah and and one of the things that um i i, I can't really say this enough because i don't do it enough take some time you don't have to read through the dungeon master's manual but it helps if you browse through it, especially if you're coming up to something, you can kind of flip through it as the DM. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, I'm coming up to this type of situation. Let me just kind of flip through those pages and glaze through them. And the monster manual, you don't even have to really look in the monster manual, just look in like a a website that's got listed of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, 5etools.com is one that's common. And just look at some of the monsters. You'll get inspiration for whatever you're doing off of that. But, you know, it helps when you're trying to beef up an encounter or just create an encounter from scratch. Well, again, that that's one of the reasons why I like the encounter builder that D&D Beyond has. For, I'm going to have to check that out. For I haven't DMs. done it yet. Yeah. Because you can, you can throw the whole party into it. Yeah. And then you can you can see how kind of what, what the difficulty is of the, of the enemies that you add to it mm-hmm. to see how difficult of an encounter it's going to be for them to to fight. So you can then you can see okay well this is going to be really easy so I could add some more so you can beef up the difficulty that way and, yeah and really build an encounter that's might be a little bit more challenging to your your party than than an eighteen second dragon kill. <laughs> when, I know I'm just going to keep bringing that up. I know you were. That's okay. It, it, it was legit. It was eighteen seconds. That's right. And everybody was all worried about it. I mean, I was like, no, come on, guys. You guys have been handling these things for like the whole game. But what was also when we first played Minds of Vendelver four years ago. Yes. And we were going through that. I wasn't, I was still new at DMing myself. Mm -hmm. So I I had no idea how to tweak the encounters. You guys were blowing through at four characters 
which is what was the the adventure was created for. Right. You are blowing through these encounters with like no difficulty whatsoever. And then I started just adding HP to guys. Just the simplest way to beef up an encounter is just add HP. Right. And when I was doing that, it was kind of like it, it made me start to realize something. But going through the the tyranny of dragon saga has really made me realize all of the D and D from uh, Wizards of the Coast content seems to be under powerful, uh, underwhelming for the amount of characters that they intend to make. So if you're going to run an adventure based upon the D and D adventures books, mm -hmm. I would say take a little time and beef up the combat. Right. Even, even just adding 30 hit points to something makes it that much more difficult because it's surviving. Maybe give it a special power. Maybe if it only has one attack, let it attack twice. Things like that vary up the whole thing. Sure. Until, until you have somebody who's a rules lawyer and you're like, they can attack twice. Yes, I'm the DM. I said so. <laughs> Absolutely. That that's that's what it is. That's that's why the DM is there because he's the one that makes the rules. So. Yeah, and I've whatever. done that. I've done that a few times. I've taken standard situations and I've modified them on the fly because right. something you guys have done have made me modify it on the fly. And yeah, is it official like raw rules as written? No. But that's the whole point of this game is to like make it fun, make it interesting. And if as an adventurer, as a player, you can predict everything. Well, where's the fun in that? Absolutely. And I, I think that's I think that's one of the one of the things that I love so much about D and D that it's not you're not railroading the characters through a through a story. You know, it can it's dynamic. It can change you can change it to be how however you want to be as difficult or as easy or as complex or as simple as as you want it to be. So there there's yeah. so much flexibility with the game itself. That's that's why I think it just it lends itself to um it lends itself well to um just different types of groups playing mm -hmm. playing the game. Different personalities, different yeah. concepts, and and people do process plans and, and and adventures differently. And when you get different DMs in there, you can run the same adventure and get up something different, totally different about it. Right. And then when you make a new character, like we're about to do, That's you can right. experiment as much as you want and do something crazy. Like we said last time, we never would have picked a rock gnome on our own, but hey, it turned out to be kind of fun. It certainly was. So, so let's do it. Perfect segue. Thank you. I I, I built it that way. <laughs> Now it's time to build a character with Andrew and Joe. So we are back in D&D &D Beyond on the character creation screen. We're going to start building using the standard method for, for creating a character. We get to. We're not going to pick a name yet because we don't. We don't know race or class yet. Right. Um, we're not really going to change any of the things at the top here. We're gonna. You. We're gonna let it use all the source books, but we're not gonna. We're going to stick to really content that is pretty much found in the basic rules. Right. So that no matter no matter who's listening to this, you can you can start out and and build a basic character. Um, we are going to enable digital dice rolling. Um, we're not going to worry about the optional class features because we're really just building a level, level one, one character, character at this point. Um, I will change advancement type to XP. Yeah. Just because. Why not? Why not? Um, and we are going to change the hit point value to manual. Like we, we did last time. We talked about this. So so remember, you want to explain that, Joe? Just briefly again, what the, what the difference is between manual versus fixed. So the fixed is an average of what you would roll plus your constitution modifier gets added to your hit points every level. Whereas with the manual, you will roll whatever your hit dice is. Uh, I think for the, um, for the monk that we had last time, I believe it was a D eight, right? You would roll the D eight and then add your modifier for your constitution modifier to that number. Now at level one, there's no dice roll needed because you automatically get a maximum hit points of your hit dice plus your constitution modifier at that time. Right. So that's not really an issue. Yes. Um, we are, we're not going to worry about the feats or multi-class requirements. 
We're not going to worry about much of this. We, we will use encumbrance. Again, we're talking about how much stuff your character can carry and, and how that how that impacts it. We are going to ignore coin weight. Um, so no matter how much, how many gold pieces, silver pieces, copper pieces you have, that's not going to impact how much you can you can carry in your pack. Right. Um, we will leave the modifier sco- modifier on the top yep. in the display, and we're going to turn this to public so so we can share it. We'll we'll share the PDF of the. Um, the rock gnome. I have to. I have to finish yeah, we, the backstory. Yeah, we've got, we're going to share the character sheets on uh, on Discord, so you can you can check them out there. But that's the. Those that are just some of the the preparation steps on the on the preferences. Let's really dive into. Let's let's choose a race. So we are going to again. I mean, I, I I've bought so much content. I've I've got a million different races in here. We are going to, let's see, go to basic rules and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. So we will roll what a D10 we said. Take out the nine and take out the 10. And in this case, we're going to take out eight because Rock Gnome is listed as number eight on this list. So that leaves us Dragonborn, Dwarf, Elf, Half Elf, Half Orc, Halfling, Human, and Tiefling. So eight and ten are gone, right? Because eight for eight, the rock gnome ten is nothing. Correct. All right. And of course, I roll an eight. Of course. No more rock gnome. We already have one. If you roll eight again, we do it anyway. Oh, interesting. Seven, which is human. Oh, so this is really interesting. So the the reason why humans are interesting, and I think Andrew will agree with me, is that. As a human, they are one of the most versatile races, if not the most versatile race, which actually allows you to, you know, maximize your capabilities for whatever class you end up picking. Yeah, humans humans get a plus one to every ability score, correct? That's what, correct. That's what we talked about. So, yeah. um, so it, it, I think it'll be really interesting. It, it's... It's kind of, I don't want to say they're bland. Well, that's the thing is like they're, they're bland because they just get the plus one. They have no individual flavor for the race. Right. But that's because we are all humans and they never, they intense intentionally did this so that everything else that you can pick dragonborn dwarf, they all have distinct characteristics. Right. Now, like we said, you know, granted, you know, it's, it's kind of boring to, but when you get a plus one to literally everything, you just added six ability points. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was only half for the the modifier, but six ability points before you even rolled the dice, and that's yeah. a massive boost. Yeah, but I, I feel like I feel like the human is the Ken of the Barbie world. <laughs> his his job is beach. Like he's like my job is beach. Like this is it, it's just like you got you've, you've got astronaut Barbie, you've got Supreme Court Justice Barbie, you got all these other things. And you got human Ken. Like I'm just I'm just Ken. Yeah, but I see. I look at I, it, I look at it differently. It's like I think you're <clears> right. It's the Ken doll, but you can literally put anything on it now, and and it works. Like right. so. So with a dwarf, yes, you can be a magical dwarf. But typically, dwarves would be a better melee character, something using physical strength. Doesn't have to be, but that's what it typically is. Uh, elves tend to have some type of music, magical or, or you know, dexteritous. You wouldn't normally make a, a, a an elf being a fighter, but you can. Right. The human allows you can pick anything. Sure. It, it's like the universal versatility of anything. No, I'm not. I'm not knocking humans. You, you were you were calling us boring and bland. Well, yes, but my my very first character was a human wizard. So, so there's that. So I don't. I, mm. I don't know. I don't know I, about that. <laughs> I feel like there's I feel like there's just so many other cool races well, out there like I, things I agree. you can be. I agree. It's like I'm a, I'm already a human. Why do I still want to be a human? Like Yeah, no, no, I I agree, but it also depends on what you're trying to do. Obviously, there are certain settings out there where the DM will tell you, "No, you'll have to be a human." There's like two of them out there, I think. But other than that, I think the idea of picking a human just allows I'm not sure what I wanted to do with my character yet. Right. And 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 you can play around with it. I, I think it's it's 
I'm trying to think of the right word for it. It's, I don't, I, I, you, you, I don't, your, your concept is right. I know you weren't the, the words I, you're using a little. You're not trying to be that I negative don't, about I, it. Exactly. Yeah, I, know I, don't wanna be, I don't want to be. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to like. <laughs> he's insulting the human race. I, I, I'm, it's, it's I'm terrible. not. I'm he, not he's, insulting. He's all race. for these fantasy races. He just doesn't like humans, you know. So obviously, we like we said, the ability score increases. We get that automatically. So now we have like what is that? 30, 25, 30 languages. Yeah, but but again, these are because I, I have all the other books. So oh, so so go back to the basic rules. You have that uh, that tab open. Let's see I, if I it, do have a tab open for say anything about. Let's see if we have do we have anything on languages? Those are. Those are classes. classes. Let's see. Personality and background. Languages. Languages. Huzzah. Uh, so what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So roll a d20, 1 through there, 16. Wait, there's 16? Well, you got the exotic languages too. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh, 9? 10, nine. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, 17. 17. So, so we'll call it a d20. Well, and- no, well, actually, it's, it is 16 because commons already know. That's true. Yeah. So, so red, roll the d20, and uh, anything 17 or higher, we, we, we re-roll. re-roll. All right. Right on. All right. Let's Dwarvish, elf, elvish, giant, gnomish, goblin, halfling, orc, and then the exotic ones of abyssal, celestial, draconic, deep speech. Deep speech. Infernal, primordial, sylvian, and undercommon. All right. Here we go. Well, I guess I we're, are we saying dwarvish is number one. Dwarvish would be number one. So I because I roll in that one. So <laughs> so it's a it's a human who knows common and dwarvish. Common and dwarvish, which will be interesting too, because it, the 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 plan is to use this with uh, the, the the adventure we hope to do a couple of episodes of, and if it knew gnome. it would be kind of like all right. Well, that would just be a duplicate then, because the gnome. What language does does, well, know, the, does she know? The gnome, she knows another one. The gnome knows common. And what else, though? I don't remember. I wonder if we should look that up and make sure it wasn't dwarvish. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, no, we did elvish. Elvish, yes, we yeah, did. Okay. We so did this elvish. is good. So we have a nice little diversity in the languages. All right. So we have our human speaking dwarvish. And we are gonna, it increases all ability scores by one. All right. Let's go on to class. Uh, now I think this was a, this was a D 12. So anything, but a monk. So one, well, two, not anything three, but four, a monk. five. Oh, any magical creature. Right, 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 right. We're doing a spell caster. So, yeah. so we'll just roll it until we get a spell caster. Correct. I'm no, gonna, no, no. Hold on. We're doing pure spell caster. Are we talking about the hybrids too, that we're doing? Uh, let's debate. Let's debate. It doesn't have to be. A, let's see what the role is. Let's see what the role is. That's why I'm let's, I got my fable D twelve. Just just roll the dice. Or the die. That's a five. One, two, three, four. Druid? One, two, three. No. One, two, three, four. That's fighter. Because with oh, artificers. Because we're, we're not doing artificers. Artificer right. right. So that's so a that re-roll. Fighter, so let's re-roll that. That's another five. Which I would have taken Druid. How about no wait, nine was what was nine? One, two, three. A rogue? Well, no, no that's rogue. Not, that's not really magical enough. Not really spell cast. We're really looking for really the, the last three there. I mean, we could just roll a D6 and assign them. Cleric? Well, just just take a D6 and, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm determined. I'm determined. Determined to, to use the Fable 12? Like, it does not want to roll real high for me. There, oh, we got an 11. That will be a warlock. Warlock is is fun. Yeah, I like a warlock. Okay, a human warlock. I've never played a warlock. I've never really dealt with a warlock. Really, Mike was a warlock for a brief time in the uh, Ten Towns adventure, yeah. Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. But and I actually helped him like create his character. But other than that, I really haven't dealt with warlocks. I am currently playing. Cat, with- Cat was a warlock at one point, I think. Was she really? Yeah, because she had. Oh, you know, it was a. She was a warlock in your game when the um, Strixhaven. Ah, Strixhaven. 
got it. I'm I'm playing a tiefling warlock. I saw. Yeah, you told me. In yeah, the, your Monday or Wednesday. Silas, night. Silas Bloodbane. Yeah, that's a fun one. So with Mike, we we found one called the the Foundless or something like that. So he was his his uh, his dwarf was a warlock who had this uh, power from the deep it was a water thing, and it helped him with his brewing of beer. Like he tied the whole thing together, made his beer better because he was brewing with the power of this water creature giving him powers. Interesting. It was interesting. Fascinating. So warlock. Warlock. Dun, dun, dun. So let's talk a little, a little bit about the warlock. The warlock is a wielder of magic that is derived from a bargain with an extra planar entity. And I think is, that, very, is that right? Extra planar? Is extra, that? extra planar. Planar. I, I don't think it's planar. Like I think it's planar. I don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> tomato, tomato. So the interesting thing that yes. I, I found, so like when I first played, when I first yes. started reading into D&D and all that stuff, I've always thought of a warlock as an evil creature because you have an evil. But when they read the way that describes this, extra planar doesn't necessarily mean evil. It just means somebody not from this plane. So some of the powers, some of the creatures that you make, uh, entities that you make deals with, they're not evil. They're just neutral and i think there's one or two that are actually good but it's usually the pact that you make with them tends to be unbalanced because as a warlock if the dm wants to play it that way they can force you to do things in the adventure or you lose your powers because it would be like your 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 pact fiend or or friend tells you do this and if you don't do that they start taking your powers away right which is a really deep way to play it as a DM. You need a lot of prep time to think about that, but it's kind of a cool concept. So here's here's where I'm going with my tiefling warlock, Silas. So my my patron, which is who gives you your correct your powers, my patron is an undead Egyptian god. Mm. That so I he, it's kind of, it's almost like making a bargain with the devil. Yes. So, to, so to speak, I don't, I don't know that he is, he is evil. He, he has not presented himself as, as such. He presented me with the ability to have all this power in exchange for, for helping him accomplish certain tasks. <coughs> Moon Knight. <coughs> no, well, no, no, not. So it's weird because it, it kind of kind of is that kind of plays Moon Knight, but um, so so what's happening is um, this this patron of mine. What's going to happen is he is he is trying to guide me to assemble an army of undead soldiers to to rise up and take over. And that's that's his plan. He his plan is to raise an undead army and and take over the world. And what what I what, what's gonna happen to me is I'm gonna have to decide because I I'm really the one controlling the undead army. I'm the one assembling this undead army. Am I going to choose to rem, to choose evil? And and give over this undead army to my patron to let him try to take over the world? Or am I going to turn against him and use the undead army against him to defeat him? Literally what I was just thinking. Yeah. So that, that's what that's what I'm that's what's gonna happen at some point. Knowing knowing full well that I will lose all of my power. Because because which, which could arguably be your power over the undead army. Well well, I mean, it, it depends. Like, I mean, at at some point, I've got to convince them to fight, fight the patron. Does the undead army have like intelligence and and like cognizance of who and what they are, or are they just drones? I don't know yet. I ha I haven't gotten that far in the who who the play who tonight. decided that this is what the um your your, your patron wants. Was this your idea for the backstory? This is this is my idea for okay. for my character development. Okay. Like, like this is this is where I want him to to come to this focal point to make this decision. Yes, correct. Is the DM doing anything to help focus that? Oh, yeah. Or, yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're 
it, it's coming along quite nicely. So, so I think the it's very early. It's very early, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put an idea in your head. You know, don't worry about the intelligence and whatever. You have to, in, in in my head, and this is just me. You have to put a subtle, you know, order sixty six into the minds, into this, the, the, the beings of these creatures so that when it's time to turn the army over to them, if you decide to reject him, you do like an exit, uh, execute order 66, like the Pal- Palpatine did. And they all of a sudden turn back to you. Right. Like that way they, they, they're, they're hardwired for you, but they still are based upon the power that you had. But now, now, you don't. Know, it's interesting. Or, or maybe I find a second patron who will, a, a good patron who will help me overthrow the bad patron and use the undead army to overthrow the bad patron. I mean, there's... are you a neutral right now yourself or are you evil? You're, I'm you're chaotic. Aligned? No, I'm chaotic neutral. So are, I could. You are neutral. So you're on that borderline of Correct. dark and light. Yeah. That's okay. why I have, I have, I have not, I, I am, I am still in that neutral zone, so I could I could go either good or evil. Watch out for the Romulans; they might be cloaked. Oh yeah, yeah. In the neutral zone, yeah, yeah. So it tends so, to happen. Are, are you being given like uh, philosophical and 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 other situations to make decisions that are a good or evil, and and by your DM, which would then like you would make the decision without them knowing, without you knowing, hey, this is good or evil. And then he'd be like, all right, well, that makes him evil and that makes him evil. And then you, he could just tell you one day, you've done enough shit that you're now evil. Or you've done enough shit that you tipped over into the good side. Like, I, I, I don't feel like it's going to happen within the adventure. Okay. Like, like it's going to, like, there's going to be a decision point. There's going to be a flash point where I have to choose either good or evil. It could be, it could be like a Kylo Ren who has been evil. And then, and then suddenly, like, decides to reach through the force, grab a lightsaber, and kill Palpatine. Right. Ah, like, uh, like, okay. Like, so it, it could completely be completely unrealistic. Got it. Could be something like that. I don't. <laughs> no, no. But what I'm saying is, like, you know, if I, I had I, to just pull something out of my head, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, I've never seen that movie, so I don't. I don't know. <laughs> no, but what? what? <laughs> yeah, you ain't missing much. <laughs> Um, no, no, but like what I was saying is like, you know, I, I hadn't, I just, this just occurred to me, like in developing a neutral character, yes. I, I, um, it would be something that a DM could do to, to develop it is keep track of how that character reacts to different circumstances. And the more evil, what'd you roll? The more evil that you do, or the more evilish type of things you do, all of a sudden one time he announces, yeah, you're now an evil character because you've been tipping that way. And then, you know it was your natural instincts as you were playing what to do. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, no, now you're evil. And then it'd be like, you know, if he did that, forget it. You, you, there's no, there's no turning against them. Right. And then, or if you, if you did enough that were good, forget it. You're definitely going to turn against them. You just got to make it work. And if you don't, if you kind of go back and forth, you're on that straight and narrow. Narrow. Now, anyway, we'll say it, it, it could go. So anyway, like we're saying way. extra planar entity that you make a pact with, you get yes. a D8 to start. For your you, hit die. For your hit dice. Your primary uh, ability is a charisma. So that's where all of your power is going to derive mm-hmm. from. That's when you're rolling to attack with there, or you're rolling but bonus damage or spell saves against you. And the reason being is your charisma is your interaction with things and people and how well you're interacting with your pack, your, your, your patron is how well your power is. Yes. And so at... At, so there's a couple other things that happen at first level. This is this is where you get your otherworldly patron. So at first level, you have struck a bargain with an otherworldly being of your choice. The Fiend, which is detailed at the end of the class description, which we'll talk about, or one from another source. Your choice grants you features at first level and at 6th, 10th, and 14th levels. There's also, yes... I was going to say, which at, at this point planned, I think we're only going to go to second level with the gameplay. Uh, at this, as of this point, there's all we have planned, but we have to yeah. work on that. So anyway, continue. Yeah, I yeah, we're not we're not going to get up to sixth level or anything. No, no. Um, okay, so packed. Not unless people start donating specifically to actually you know hear those episodes. If people want to start paying for that, we 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 could we could do like a week, like a monthly episode of. Of just playing these two characters for, for some time it depends on how long Catherine wants to, 
DM. Well, I was also thinking that, you know, my advice to her when she did cross her stride with us, it was that like, Hey, everything's laid out nice and simple. And that wasn't the case. Well, she'll see where I got that information from because I'll give her the booklet. <laughs> right. Anyway, pack magic. Yes. Pack magic. So your arcane research and the magic bestowed on you by your patron have given you f- facility with spells. There are all the spell rules for general rules of spell casting. You can look at your spell list. Um, at level one, you know, two cantrips. So cantrips do not require any spell slots or anything like that. So you can, you can use them over and over and over again. Um, and you'll, you'll get more of these as you, as you gain levels, um, you'll get more cantrips available. Um, spell slots. Spell slots is basically uh, the closest equivalent. The easiest equivalent would be mana. Every spell has a mana requirement of one, two, or three. And at a spell slot one, it requires one mana, one spell slot. And you get a certain number based upon your level. There is a chart in the instructions and the rules that lets you know how many spell slots you get per how many level in the, as, as you level up. Yeah. So it, it's war, warlocks are a little different than, well, and it's interesting that we ended up with the warlock spell cast because warlocks tend to have less spell slots yes. than everybody else. That being said, if you scroll down a little bit further, I believe as a warlock, they actually get their spell slots back on a short rest as opposed to a long rest. Am I wrong about that? Because I know you're playing one. I believe it's a short rest. So the difference is most spell casters, you need to take an eight hour rest in order to get your spell, your, your spell slots back. Uh, warlocks only have to do it on a short, can do it on a short rest. The difference being they have a lot less. Yeah. Cause I'm playing like a ninth level warlock and I've got like two spells. Like you got two per level. Like, yeah. no, I've got like two spell slots. Like that's it. That's it. Like I can only cast spells twice. Twice. I mean, I can do all my cantrips. And then you got the invocations though. That's really the balancing out factor of the, of the, of the, the warlock is they got the, the Eldridge invocations, don't you? Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Mm-mm. See, this is my inexperience with warlocks. Yeah. So, so let's go through this. So for a warlock, yeah, the warlock table shows how many spell slots you have to cast your warlock spells of first through fifth level, whatever they are. The table also shows what the level of those slots is. All of your spell slots are the same level. Oh, that's what it is. So, so here's the thing. So I have, I have upwards of fifth level spells or, or whatever. So they're all treated the same. So I can cast a first level spell, but it's a cast at a fifth level. It's not cast as a, as a, as a first level. So they're all super powerful spell. So whatever I cast is a really big spell. Right, right. But you have no first level spell slots. So right. on on other spell casters, specifically the sorcerer, the wizard, you would have uh, and most notably on the sorcerer and the wizard, I shouldn't say only. Uh you will have a spell one level spell level 1 spell and you have a certain number of spell slots for them. Right. When you cast that spell, you have the option to ca- cast it at a higher level which you would use the higher level spell slot. Right. The difference being is you could also cast it in the lower level spell slot and still save the higher level ones for spells that are actually higher level. With the warlock, you're locked into whatever level spell slot you have. So if you have a level five spell slot or a level three spell slot, let's say, even if you cast a level one spell, you have no choice but to upcast it. Now that usually means your damage dice is an extra two of that damage dice for each spell level that you go up. It's, it's pretty crazy. Like the the damage the damage that I can do with those spells is it, insane. It multiplies. Yeah. Yeah, but but I've got like two slots to yeah. use, so yeah. it's it, it's very you 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 want to use them sparingly. Sparingly. But you get you get a bunch of cantri- cantrips as as you level up, you get you get a bunch of cantrips. Yeah. So there's a lot you can still do with a with a warlock and um, and really level up those those cantrips as well. Um, that's really kind of what level one is. Yeah, what level one is. Um, 
So let's add that class to our character. Bum, 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 bum. Now, do we want to go back at this point and pick a name? Well, or, let's, or let's, let's finish, finish the class, class setup. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. let's finish the class setup. So there are a couple proficiencies. We are allowed light armor. This is cloth and uh, leather type of mm -hmm. armor. Uh, anything heavier would, a, would would create disadvantage and encumbrance for us. So something light, simple weapons. Yep. No tool proficiencies. Right. And our saving throws again are wisdom and charisma. Now, wisdom and charisma are the two that they 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 suggest that you have when you uh, when you level when you create this. They those are the two ability scores that they recommend. So we'll come back to that when we start doing the ability scores. Now, the skills that we can choose from, we can choose two skills to have proficiency in from Arcana, Deception, History, Intimidation, Investigation, Nature, and Religion. So there are six, and we can roll for this. Or do you seven. Wanna, seven? Seven. Seven. And we could roll for this with the D8. Or do you want to kind of pick them out? Like, like last time we were, oh, no, we did roll it for it last time. Did we? Yeah, I because I was saying one or I was saying uh, athletics and aerobics, right, right, and right. you said athletics and, and stealth. Say aerobics, acrobatics. I'm sorry, Acro yeah, I did say aerobics. I said it wrong. Your character's doing aerobics, jazzercise. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes. Lift those arms, ladies. That's oh jeez. So roll the D8 and and ignore the seven. All right, let's but so see. so and, hold on. Put, put yes. the options back up first. They're they're right here. Oh, okay. So me. Under this concept, I would probably pick the Arcana. So would I. And I think I would either take nature or religion. It would depend on what patron I ended up with. Depends on what character, what kind of character you want to be. Well, like, I know. Like I know, you, I know you, if you're going to be, if you're going to be. Well, no, I'm talking about from a cold start with absolutely no choices, no nothing else being decided. Right. I would pick nature and religion depending on where I would be going down after I picked my patron. Right. So, I mean, I would think you could, if you're so, going to be anywhere between neutral and evil, deception and in intimidation are some good ones. Yeah. I think history is another good one. Something to, to Kind know. of a neutral. We're going through this step by step. However, if you go through it and you like pick something at, you know, when you're in the fourth or fifth step and you, you, you pick something, there's nothing that says you can't go back and change right. something. Let's say we went with nature, with, with, with uh, Arcana and, and nature, mm -hmm. and then we pick a patron and we're like, you know what? That doesn't really fit with that one. You're always welcome to go back and change it or use the, 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 the differences to carry on the story concept. Right. So let's, right. let's roll for it and see what we... Let's roll it up. See what we got. Perfect. One. Arcana. Arcana. Well, our agreement one. Excellent. So Perfect. We, we agreed on Arcana. So anything but a one or an eight. Or not. Uh, yeah. Seven. Which is religion. You're counting. Yeah. Religion. It is. it is. That's a good one. It's a good one. And 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 like we just said, we're, we're going based upon the dice roll, but if something comes up, we can always come back. And that's another thing. When you're choosing your background, you get additional proficiencies as part of your background. If you end up picking a background that you really like that has a duplicate proficiency, jump back to, to, to the class section and alter your your proficiencies. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. So here we go. Patron oh, time. Now, now the fun part. Ooh. So... There, there are all sorts of options. Well, let's go back to the basic rules. Yes, yeah, so let's definitely Just go back case. to the basic rules and make sure we're... Because I think there's only three in the basic rules. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. I think you got to keep going. I was like, no, because it was otherworldly patron... So at first level, so yeah, so you get to choose your otherworldly patron. At the first level, you've struck a bargain with an otherworldly patron, patron of your choice, the Archfey, the Fiend, or the Great Old One. Okay. We're going to do this on a dice roll, but off the top of your head, which one did you pick? Oh, you I, picked, you I picked, pick, the, I picked uh, the Undead. You picked the Undead. Okay. Yes. So off the top of your head, which one would you pick of these three? Wow. That's a good question. Where is I'm looking for the descriptions of them. I thought I said it was at the end of this. Here we go. Other, go. Otherworldly patrons. The fiend. Is that the only one they have? That's weird. That's the only one that they listed. 
So interesting. So, well, go go back to the selection screen, and we can click on one, and it'll give us the description. Yeah. So we're gonna look at. We said what the fiend, the arch fay, the arch fay down a little bit, and, and the, the, old, great the great old, old one. one. Okay. The arch fay. Well, it doesn't give us a description. Well, it gives you it gives you a couple couple things so well, at well it doesn't really matter we're gonna roll it we're gonna roll it so let's figure out what what order arch fey fiend great old one so we'll roll a d4 yep ignore the four one through three yes i'm thinking the, the great old one i'm hoping for the fiend it is the great old one man i'm on point today yeah you are Let's take a look. So let's go to the great old one. So this gives us a couple extra things. So this gives us an expanded spell list. So the great old one lets you choose from an expanded list of spells. When you learn a warlock spell, the following spells are added to the warlock spell list for you. So at first at spell level one, which is where we'll where start we'll off. They they add on these spells of dissonant whispers and Tasha's hideous laughter. Now the idea of this is that you get two spells automatically, based upon you have the you got a pact with the great old one, and you will be able to pick one or two or three spells later on for when you when we do our magic action. So this is just like a little quote unquote bonus based upon what patron you did. I I I I read that differently. I read that these are just additional spells that you can that you can pick. You can pick from. I thought these were ones. I don't believe you can expand this spell when you learn the following. So no, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, you're right. You can add this and it and Tasha. Right. These are these are ad in addition to the standard set of warlock spells that you can choose at at spell level one. The other thing you get at Level one is what is called Awakened Mind. Starting at first level, your alien knowledge gives you the ability to touch the minds of other creatures. You can telepathically speak to any creature you can see within 30 feet of you. You don't need to share a language with the creature for it to understand your telepathic utterances. But the creature must be able to understand at least one language. Right. Fascinating. So it has to be able to speak. Or have the capability of spoken language or, or, or understanding language. Not, it doesn't have to be able to speak it. Just, just understand it. Right. Which, if you think about it, from a very basic concept, most pets understand language. Especially like a dog where you can give commands. Mm -hmm. So and arguably, and here's, here's something else you can kind of create and, and, and play with. Arguably, you can say a dog would be able to understand it so you can use your awakened mind to speak to it tele telepathically. But somebody else could say, well, they don't really know what you're saying. They just have learned responses to what, what certain sounds say. But do not dogs have their own language like they talk to each other? I don't think they have a language. Like, they like have vocalization, but they don't have a language. You sure? They're do, we, not, do we know that? They're not communicating idea. They're not communicating. How do we know? Maybe they are communicating ideas. Maybe they're just plotting <laughs> and scheming against humans. And no, like, no, no, no. There's no, going to no, be an no, uprising no, 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 no. of the dogs. That's dolphins. No, I, mean, it's, I think it's dogs. <laughs> dolphins actually have a higher intelligence score than dogs. I don't know. I, I think it's dogs. I mean, there's definitely some dumb dogs. Actually, it's but, just squirrels. Oh, the squirrels. <laughs> don't get me started on squirrels. Anyway. Moving on. So telepath, this is a great skill to have. This is amazing. So you can, you can basically speak with anyone telepathically within that you can see within 30 feet of you. And think about it. The person doesn't know you're trying to do with it, do it, trying to do it. You can really fuck with somebody's mind. You can, you can, that, that would, that would be a little, a little weird to have somebody speaking to you in your mind. This and, is like the ultimate distraction. That could be that. Could, that's an interesting way of, of doing it. Yeah, thinking about it, I like that. Using it to distract somebody. Be like, hey, telling you to do this, and you're like, well, there's voices in my head. Mm. And if they try to tell anybody, people are going to think they're crazy. Right. That's a great. That's a great way to play it. Mm. Okay. All right. So we, we we've got all of our 
Well, no, we're not even done yet because that's all the class features. We've oh, got to pick, pick spells. spells. That's right. No, 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 no. We said after we finished the class features, we're going to go do the. This is this is basically part of the class features. Okay, this, this is all true. on the same page. So, so we know. Oh, well, don't we have to? Don't we have? Don't we have? Can you go back to the the basic rules for the for the? Do they only know two spells? They. They get two cantrips and two known spells. But it, that doesn't go up with the, the stats. I don't, that's, that's what I'm trying to remember. So, like, on the wizard and stuff like that, it's it's your your modifier makes your spell list, the number of spells that you know, go up. No, it's that's just based it's on... It's just based on the, the, the chart, and the chart yeah. goes up. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's take a look. Let's look at cantrips. We got, we got a bunch of cantrips in here. Um, I don't even know... Can we can we can we go back to the basic rules and trim them down to? Is there even a spell list in the basic rules? Let's go to Pact Magic, spell casting. See chapter ten for general rules of spell casting. Chapter eleven for the warlock spell list. So the warlock spells. Oh, here we go. Are One, two. cantrips are chill touch. Eldritch Blast, Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, Poison Spray, Prestidigitation, and True Strike. I've never liked the idea of True Strike. Not for a Warlock. I'm telling you, Eldritch Blast is where it's at. Everybody says that. It's overpowered, especially for a first level character. It's It's overpowered. Amazing. Because right now, I don't don't think... I'm going to disagree with that, that it's overpowered. One D ten. One D ten plus your modifier. But one D ten is very powerful for a level one character. I, su- I suppose. It's one D ten and if you and if you if you boost out your, your charisma and you put up at least a, 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 a three modifier, two or three modifier, that's a, a possibility of thirteen hit points on level one when, when you're really you know only fighting creatures that have like four or five hit points. Yeah, well that's very powerful. Yeah. And what I like is you get two beams. Because, oh, is that right? So the beam, it's a beam of crackling energy that, that streaks across. And the range is really decent, too. It's 120, 120 feet. When you reach level five, a level five character, you get a second beam. Oh, third beam, you mean? Second beam. At level oh, five. Oh, oh, I thought you said the whole thing was two beams. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So it's a single beam. At yep. first level, yep. when you hit level five, you get a second beam. Um, so then it could be it's one d ten, one d ten potentially, but you have to roll an attack roll for to each hit. for each beam. Yep. So it's not one attack roll and and all beams hit. So that's that's one thing to be aware. Of. But I am I'm a big fan of of Eldritch Blast. I Makes would sense. I would say let's pick that one. You want to pick it or you want to roll it? I'm going to pick it. You want to pick it? I'm going to pick it. All right, pick it. And I'll tell you, like the other, like the other one I I picked initially was Mage Hand. I mean, because you can you can do a lot of other attack attack spells as a cantrip, but if you get Eldritch Blast again, like you said, it, it's what do you need else for? What else do you need? As far as an attack spell is concerned, I mean, true strike, but it's a concentration. True strike is worthless for an an, an L, for for a warlock because all it does is give you a, 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 an extra advantage on that next attack. Right, and it, it doesn't have to be a melee attack. No, it's not a melee attack. It's no, any it's kind just of any attack. attack. So I think, and, yeah. but, but the range is 30 feet and it's like, well, okay, anybody can come in here and whack me one and there goes my concentration right. and I literally wasted an entire round doing nothing. Yeah. I mean, what are, what are the other? So chill, chill touch, touch, Eldritch Blast, Mage Hand, Minor Illusion, Poison Spray, Prestidigitation and True Strike. True Strike. So chill touch is kind of cool. It's like a latch. Well, well, and, well here's here's the difference. Then mm-hmm. here's the only real difference. Eldritch blast is a ranged attack spell. Mm-hmm. If somebody comes up right on you, you can't cast the cantrip a, a ranged spell. Well, you can, but it's at disadvantage. Right. So chill touch, which is the one you're looking at right now, right. that's a melee attack spell. 
Yes, that, that's a good point. So it's, or chill touch is arranged. Oh, this is, oh, oh, you know what? I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking something else. I thought, I thought chill touch was that. Now I'm thinking something else then. There's another one that you had when you were playing Fiang. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. I thought it was chill touch. But... No. So that's, that's probably, like I said, that's why I would do something like mage hand, which is more of a utility. It's not something you're going to use in combat, but it's a great utility spell. Go back to the list a second. Yeah. Chill touch, eldritch blast, mage hand. Minor illusion is is decent, but I don't think most people would use minor illusion to the fullest extent. I think you would want to be more of a role play person than a a whack 'em person for mm -hmm. for minor illusion. Poison spray is another option. I think poison spray has multiple streams. Poison spray, so. 10 foot range. So it's a close, close range spell, but you extend your hand toward a creature. You can see within range, project a puff of noxious gas from your palm. Oh, okay. They've got a, it's, or it's one D 12. But it's, but, but, but it's range is the limitation factor. Yeah. So you're waiting for somebody to get it in close. Yeah. So, uh, so here, and here's another thing, right? It's, it's, it depends on who you're facing, right? Are you facing like big, tough, burly men? You don't want to go against somebody with a constitution spaving throw because if they're big, right. tough fighters, they're probably going to have a high constitution. Right. Now, the Eldritch Blast is just a straight up hit right. or miss. Here, we're dealing with the idea of um, saving throws. Right. And in my experience, saving throws tend to do more damage, but they harder to make stick. Right. And like I say, it all depends on what, who you're... Who you're up against. Like this is this is a, a great entry level spell, but when you get up against something something bigger, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna have a high constitution and and you're gonna have a hard time I, I, succeeding. I think, I think going that. with mage hand's a good idea because press the digitation is not really something. I mean, I would tell you press the digitation. It's kind of a fun spell. It's right beneath yeah. it. But again, it's like I mean you, you a minor create... a minor magical trick that novice spellcasters use for practice. Ooh, sounds so exciting. Even the description is blah on that one. Yeah, and that's why I'm saying like I, I like the concept of it, but for what we're trying to do, I don't think this is good. I think Mage Hand's a good choice. Again, this always brings me back to Simon the So-So Sorcerer <laughs> in, in the movie. <laughs> Look, it's fresh cut grass. Can you smell it? And it's like, that's, what's, what's, that's minor illusion. What's the point of that? That's prestidigitation. I should what, say, not yeah, minor what's, illusion. What's the point of that? It yes. really does nothing. It's literally like something to throw people off your trail. Exactly. It's so, just, so go ahead. Go, go, go with the Mage Hand. Thanks, Joe. I will. I, I got my roles, so That's right. I'll, I'll give you the choice. So let's talk about. We're gonna, we're gonna spend all day on. I'm just talking about spells. Well, there's only a few here. So, charm person, charm person, comprehend, comprehend languages, expeditious retreat. I don't think I've ever seen anybody choose before, and I love the concept of it. Interesting, hellish rebuke, very cool. Illusory script, protection from evil and good, which is a good one. Unseen servant. But then we also have, what were the other ones that it was? Dissonant whips, Whispers? Yeah, click on that one. That's one of the ones that it was adding, right? Wasn't that one of the ones that? Yeah, this is 3D6 psychic damage. It was Dissonant Whispers. Yeah. And then uh, I'll, I'll know it, I think, when I see it. Hideous Laughter. It was Tasha's, Tasha's Hideous, Hideous Laughter. Laughter. There's a couple more down there. Yeah. You go. This is a very, this one could be kind of fun. This one's kind of interesting. It's a wisdom saving throw. And if they fail, they actually double over with laughter. Yeah. However, I think it says you have, to, you have to have a minimum of an F4 intelligence in order for this to work. Right. If the creature only has two intelligence, this just fails. Right. <laughs> I love that stipulation. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting, like, extra yeah. quirk, to the, quirk to the spell. Absolutely. All right, so let's do this. Why don't we... Let's roll. Let's roll for these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that seven or is that eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we we'll add the other two, nine. So roll a ten. All right, roll a d ten, and let's see what we roll a d six. Roll a d six. No, that's a song. I figured. Coming from you. Ten. 
Reroll. Eight. That will lead us to go back to the list. So we said unseen one, servant. Two, three, four, five, oh, no. six, seven. Seven would be either would be exp- that would be dissonant whispers. Dissonant whispers. Whisper discordant melody that only one creature of your choice within range can hear. Range is sixty feet. The target must make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save, takes 3d6 psychic damage, and use its reaction to move as far away from you as possible. The creature doesn't move into obvious danger ground, like it can't run itself off a cliff, or into a fire or a pit. On a successful save, it just takes half as much damage and doesn't have to move. The, oh, a deafened creature automatically succeeds on the save. So the idea is you can still do the some of the damage, but it wouldn't be as bad because it would only hear the whispers. It wouldn't hear the whispers. It would just right. take the second. Okay, so dissonant whispers. So we huh? need another roll. Anything but an eight or a nine. I mean, eight or a ten. Sorry. Right. Another eight. It's magic, man. And another ten. Sheesh. And another ten. Okay. And a seven. Well, that one gives us the Unseen Servant. Unseen Servant. Joe, tell them what they've won. You have won a range of 60 spell that creates an invisible, mindless, shapeless medium force that performs simple tasks if you command until the spell ends. The duration of the spell is one hour. The Servant springs into existence on an unoccupied space of the ground within range and has 10 AC, takes 11 to hit, uh, 10 to hit, one hit point, so it's got really nothing, and a strength of two. It can't even attack, and it drops to hu- it drops to zero hit points if the spell ends. So this is a um, a spell. If it goes for more than an hour, it just it basically dies. On each of your turns, as a bonus action, you can mentally command the servant to move up to fifteen feet to interact with an object. The servant can perform simple tasks that a human servant could do, such as fetching things, cleaning, mending, folding clothes, lighting fires, serving food, and pouring wine. Once you give the command, the servant performs the task to the best of its ability until it completes the task, then waits for you your next command. If you command the servant to prepare a task that would move it more than 60 feet away, the spell ends. So the interesting thing about Excellent. something like this is like if you're in a place where you need to reach a lever and you can't reach it mm-hmm. and it's within 60 feet, you cast your unseen servant, boom. Or you can use it as a diversion. I mean, like there's there's ideas, there's concepts here. There's just so many fascinating things you could do with this, really. Like it, this is a great one, great one for role playing. I Again. Think. Yeah. There's a and, and that's something else that we keep coming back to is that you can play this game multiple different ways. You can do it however you want. You can be heavy into action and ah, I'm just going to smash this wall to get out of the way. Right. Or like, hey, I'm going to send my unseen servant around the corner to see if it. And I think it's interesting here. It doesn't say that it has to stay in visual contact with you. You can move it around a corner even if you're not there. Right. Yes, it does not. It does not mention that. So yeah, you don't have to. Right. You don't have to be able to see it for the spell to. It's not like a concentration spell where you have to be able to like see the mm-hmm. the thing happening. That's really cool. All right. Excellent. All right. So we've got our two, we've got two first level spells and we've got, so we've got our can, let's start with our cantrips. We have Eldritch Blast and Mage Hand and Dissonant Whispers is a first level spell and Unseen Servant is our second first level spell. So now we've, we've gotten through all the major, major parts of this. Now we're going to go back and name our person, give our character a, well, first we got to do a cl- uh, uh, gender, male or female, yes. because that's the only options we can choose. All right, so we'll do, I think we did a D6 last time, odds and evens. That's correct. Say so odds are male. Sure. Since yeah, they, well, yeah. men yeah. are odd. Um, I was going to say odd and have the, the extra besides the even. It is odd. Well, that works out for the dichotomy because the uh, our, our rock gnome was female. Yes. So we need a male human name. Well, hold on. Go back. Go back to. Let's see what D and D's got here. Helmuth Daywoods. I kind of like that one. Giovanni Forsward. Yeah, I like Helmuth, but let's see what yeah, the. I don't like what, any of the names. Okay. 
Let's go to fantasy name generator. All right, so we've got to do. What do we do? We don't have. Hmm. What do we what do we want to choose, Joe? There's no magic user. We'll go with magic user There's names. No warlock, yeah. There's no warlock. All right, so we're gonna choose magic user names. And let's see. What do we want? Well, change it to mail, right? Where? Oh. There was one on the Rock Gnome one. Not here. Okay. Get more names. These are these are these are like names of types of Yeah, this is no this is no fun. Wizard let's try wizard names. Let's, it's close enough. Let's go wizard names. Ooh. Zarek. XR. Oh here we go. So now we can do mail. Yeah, names. there it is. Uh of that list, I'm really feeling Ophius and a Herod. Well, how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's. How about we roll a d10 and. Yeah. Equium. Number five. Equium. Hold on. Roll it again, and we'll use the other one as the last name. Or should we roll a new set and pick That'll the last name? That'll work too. Let's, so let's, go, let's go neutral names. Equium. Equium Aravius. I like that. That's good. Hang on. Now I got to remember how to spell all this. All, all right. right. Equium Aravius. So we have our name, Equium Aravius. Yes. Now we're going to go to the ability scores. Yes, ability score. And we're going to do the generation method of rolling the dice. Yes. Let's roll it up. Oh boy. Here we go. Let's see. Yeah, that's that's it. This is a Leroy Jenkins type of time. No, it's not a Leroy Jenkins type of time. Ooh, I like that sound. That was a great sound. Ooh, 11. Ooh, 11. That's uh, not that great. Yeah. Oh, even worse. Another 11. Ooh. We have to be average Joe here. 13. That's a 13. Oh, there we go. There's a 14. Okay, a 14. Things are looking up a little bit. No, I mean, no, maybe not. <laughs> a four. four. <laughs> Holy crap. Obviously, charisma has got to be the 14. Of course. So charisma, 14. I think wisdom has to be the 13. Yeah. Because those are the two big, big scores. I don't think, I don't think. <sighs> can, can we put the strength as a four? And like, think of this as um, what's his name from from the Dragonlance Chronicles, the the twin. I can't think of his name now. Oh, I don't remember. You know what I'm talking I about? I know like, exactly. He, he was always about. sickly. His yes. barbarian brother was yes. always taking care. Like, maybe this is a little more extreme, but I'm thinking this for that. You want to make the strength four? Yeah. Okay. I mean, he's really not going to be able to do anything strength-wise, like ever. Right. But like, hey, look, man, you made a pact, and and this was right. And, and here, here we can build. Like, hey, no, guys, here we go. We're talking about uh, backstories again. His right. part, part of his pact was, you will lose your strength. You will have my power, but you will lose your strength. He is feeble, physically, physically, but eventually will be very powerful, powerful magically. Yeah, speaking. What do we want the nine to be? Intelligence? Definitely not dexterity or constitution. No, yeah. So intelligence, because the dex and that, yeah. And then we'll make the 11. And remember, we got plus ones to all of these, so. So that, yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So that would definitely help with these two 11s. Well, they're still going to be only plus ones anyway. Well, that'll put them up to 12, so yeah, that'll yeah. bump them up. We'll still be plus ones, though. Right. No, but yeah, what yeah. I'm saying is they, yeah. they would have been a zero. Absolutely. No, yeah, yeah. So. Better than nothing. All right, so we're going to do... So the scores that we we rolled initially were 14, 13, two 11s, a 9, and a 4. Oof. So we have, because Charisma and Wisdom... Charisma is the primary ability for a Warlock, so we gave that a 14. 
Wisdom, we gave the 13 because that's the saving throw. That's another another big one for Warlocks. We gave that the 13. Uh, we put in Dexterity and Constitution. And that, again, we've always talked about those being kind of the middle, yep. middle scores. So we gave those both yep. 11s. Yep. Um, intelligence, which is a 9. Remember, we get a plus 1 to all these abilities um, because of the human. So that 9 will become a 10. So at least it'll be a 0. It'll, it won't be a negative one on yeah, the modifier. It, it'll get something there. Yeah. yeah. And the four, we just put strength because we're going to write it into the backstory that this is just a, this he's, is the, he's the crappy lost, deal he made. He, he, he was drained of all of his strength in order to get the power of, of magic as a, as a warlock from his patron of the great old one. So we are going to apply those ability scores. Yep. Wow, a minus three for strength. Yikes. That's really bad. That's going to be a very interesting. That's really bad. You know what? I like it. I like it because we are almost definitely, as two characters, not going to be overpowered for any of these combat encounters. Right. Yeah, for sure. This will be fun. I think so. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And that's, again, this is is part of the randomness that happens. Exactly. So you you get to you get to craft a really fun story about uh, a character that's got very little strength. Why did they have very little strength? So we will we will find out. Tune in next time for that's right. All right. So now we've got. So we got to pick the extra language. No, we got to pick a language. No, oh, we, no, we did. We got we, the dwarves. We picked dwarvish as so the extra got language. Backgrounds. Now the backgrounds. Let's go back to. Uh, let's see. Where is it? I think it's back, back forward one more. Oh, no, there it is. Backgrounds. One, two, three, four, five, six. Acolyte, criminal, folk hero, noble, sage, and soldier. All right, so six? Yep. All right, so we're going to pick, what is our... Now remember, you don't have to randomize this. We're just doing that for our for the, purposes, for the fun of it. So you can you can absolutely just pick which which background you want to do. But we're going to roll for background. Get a one. No. Okay. This will be interesting because I'm curious how this is going to play out. A three, a folk hero. You want to know where my mind's going? Do I? So. What's actually happening is mm-hmm. this great old one was afflicting his village for one reason or another. And maybe maybe he did something wrong as a child or in his youth that offended the great old one who then decided to punish his entire village. And then he stepped up and said, no, punish me. So he said, fine, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to create a pact with you. And instead of just taking some of your strength, I'm going to take a lot of your strength as part of your punishment. And then the town recognized him as a folk hero because he saved them by sacrificing himself. But now he's left the town because he still has a little negative stigma attached to him to go out and make his fortune in the world however he can. Works for me. Why not? So so the description they give for the folk hero is, you come from a humble social rank. But you are destined for so much more. Already, the people of your home village regard you as their champion, and your destiny calls you to stand against the tyrants and monsters that threaten the common folk everywhere. Kind of fits in with that. Yes, your skill proficiencies as a folk hero are with animal handling and survival. Which we don't currently have. And that'll be another good one. The survival, um, yeah. Tool proficiency. Vehicles. Well, you already have what, yeah. So yeah. you can you can use like wagons and stuff yeah. like that. Now we gotta we gotta pick a an art we gotta pick a tool set, artisans tools. So what makes sense as a person who lives in a quote unquote random village? How about painter supplies? Um, what, what if he was like artistic at one point? Well, if he if he doesn't have any strength, I would I would say things like smiths' tools, 
would mm-hmm. would would not fit for someone that's got a agreed a, a four for strength. Maybe something like jeweler's tools, something something that that takes just precision. Tiny. Maybe he's a cook. What about a cook? What about a cook? Could, it, could they be a cook? Yes. And what happened was the great old one, they had a garden dedicated to him. And for some reason he was out of supplies or something like that. He went and pulled things from the garden of the great old one, which offended them. And ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cook, cook. Right. So I like that. Right on. Um, the background features rustic hospitality. You come from the common folk and you feel fit in uh, with them, amongst them with ease. You can hide, rest, or recuperate with other commoners unless you have shown yourself to be a danger. They will shield you from the law or anyone else searching for you, though they will not risk their lives for you. So it's like, hey, I will help you until you my life is risked. Right. Oh, characteristics. Oh, I love these. Personality traits. So we're gonna we're gonna choose two of these. So we got two D eights to roll. I judge people by their actions, not their words. If someone is in trouble, I'm always ready to lend help. When I set my mind to something, I follow through no matter what gets in my way. I have a strong sense of fair play and always try to find the most equitable solution to arguments. I am confident in my own abilities and do what I can to instill confidence in others. Thinking is for other people. I prefer action. I misuse long words with in the attempt to sound smarter. I get bored easily when I, when I am going to get on, when am I going to get on with my destiny? Excellent. So we rolled a three, which is when I set my mind to something, I follow through no matter what gets in my way. Like it. That'll be fun. I already building that into the backstory. Fabulous. And number eight, I get bored easily. When am I going to get on with my destiny? The people of his town didn't want him to sacrifice himself, but he followed through with it anyway. And then the great old one said, you know, you will be able to reach great depths, great powers, but Mm -hmm. you have to wait. And he was sitting there. When am I going to get these powers? So ideals. Yes. Ideals. Respect people. Uh, People respect. uh, People despect. Joe talking. Take two. Take two. People deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Good alignment. Fairness, no one should be get preferential treatment before the law, and no one is above the law. It's a lawful mentality. Freedom, tyrants must not be allowed to oppress the people. Chaotic. Might, if I become strong, I can take what I want, what I deserve. Evil. Sincerity, there is no good in pretending to be something I'm not. That's neutral. And destiny, nothing and no one can steer me away from my higher calling. And that can go against any uh, personality trait, any. I really, I really have the urge to sing George Michael right now. Freedom. Freedom. Tyrants must not be allowed to oppress the people. It's interesting. Good stuff. Good stuff. Bonds. James Bonds. Multiple Bonds. I have a family, but I have no idea where they are. One day I hope to see them again. I work the land, I love the land, and I will protect the land. A proud noble once gave me a horrible beating, and I will take my revenge on any bully that I encounter. My tools are symbols of my past life, and I carry them so that I will never forget my roots. I protect those who cannot protect themselves, and finally, I wish my childhood sweetheart had come with me to pursue my destiny. Two, which is, I worked the land, I love the land, and I will protect the land. Yeah. This is this is this is really fitting in nicely with the whole uh, cook and uh, chef thing. Yeah, damn environmentalists. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with using the land. Just don't abuse the thing. I I, I feel a a crying American Indian. <laughs> Actually, I I have another way of going with it, but that works too. All right, so now the flaws. Flaws. The tyrant who rules my land will stop at nothing to see me killed. I am convinced the significance of my destiny and blind to my shortcomings and the risk of failure. 
The people who know me when I was young know my shameful secret so I can never go home again. That would fit in perfectly. That's a good one. I have weakness for the vices of the city, especially hard drink. Secretly, I believe that things would be better if I were a tyrant lording over the land. Many people have that one. I have trouble trusting in my allies. Mm. That'd be a very interesting role-playing concept. Indeed. Here, take this potion. I don't know who you are. I'm not going to take a potion from you. (laughs) Okay, so number four. I have a weakness for the vices of the city, especially hard drink. This could be very Hard drinking warlock. I would love to see... I would love to see a drunk warlock casting. Would here's a question for you: If 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 this is a a drunk warlock, do they cast spells at disadvantage? If he was currently drunk, That's what I'm I saying. would say yeah. If he was drunk, he 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 might be drunk pretty often. But however, you got to think about this: he might be drunk pretty often. But I would interpret this as. While he has the vices of the of the city, especially the hard drink, he probably can't get that very easily out in the wild. So unless he's in town, he's in probably, town. unless he's in a town or a city, he's probably pretty sober or at the very least hungover. So I, I would say or, that. Or do you think he's he's buying containers of alcohol? I don't think he has the money to do so because of how his current state is. He's not very powerful yet, so he doesn't have a lot of extra coin to buy and bring it with him. So he spends his coin on a room and then drinks himself to that. Drinks himself into oblivion. That's how I'm thinking about the storyline right now. I don't know. I don't know. I I think he's just. I think he's just. You do you remember? Did you watch? I'm sure you have watched The Princess Bride. Of course. So you remember Inigo Montoya after? Yeah. Like he's just. He, he, he's, he's just wasted. Yeah, exactly. And, like and I, he, Andre keeps dumping yeah, him. Exactly. In there. <laughs> that that's that's what I feel like his party's going to have to do with him when he when they leave town. Absolutely. Like just dunk him in some cold water, <laughs> wake him up, and well, she's going to have to. I can't think of her yes. name right now. The, the Rock Gnome. Yes, the Rock Gnome will have to do that. So if Endelver starts that they leave uh, uh, Neverwinter, I think it was, and they leave as a as guards uh, on this this wagon, mm-hmm. she's. He's got the expertise in the land in the way I can drive the wagon. Meanwhile, he's passed out in the back actually, and she's trying to figure out how to run the stupid thing. Well, so much, so much to do with that. Did I? Did I add that already? I don't think you did add it. You have to click on it. Yeah. No, no, no. You the. No, uh, I wanted to see it here. They are. Oh, okay. So I got bonds. Yeah, so I haven't. I haven't done flaws yet. Yeah. Okay. So well, that wasn't was... there one that we were supposed to pick two for? I said it was four. Yeah, that was four. First one. Oh, we did get two. Okay. Yeah. All First, right. Personality traits were, were two. So we'll scroll back down. We are now on alignment. Alignment. I think this has to be chaotic no matter what because of what's happened to him. Okay. And I think we can probably even delve into the concept of evil if we want to because he's probably very resentful of the, his circumstances. But he's a folk hero doesn't matter he's a folk hero he's got to be good he doesn't i would i would say i would say neutral good what about lawful think about it he in in the storyline that i'm cooking up in my head mm-hmm. he would did something wrong and he fessed up to it i'm gonna come forward and the old one punished him not the rest of the village so what if he was lawful neutral or lawful good and that way, he he has this innate need to do everything absolutely correct, which puts him into trouble because he's doing everything correctly and, and, and by the book, and he, he can't get away from that, even when it puts him in peril and put, gives him problems. Sure. That works for me. So what do you want, a lawful good or lawful neutral? I say lawful neutral. Lawful neutral. So lawful neutral individuals act in accordance with the law, tradition, or personal codes. Many monks and some wizards are lawful neutral. Right. Perfect. Nice. We're not going to worry about faith because it's not. It's basically the great old one, but that's not even really a faith. It's It's a a path. Yeah. Yeah. Lifestyle. 
poor I, or modest. I think modest again is probably appropriate. Yeah. He right. probably makes himself a little coin, gets into a comfortable room, then drinks himself. Right. Okay. So modest. Yada yada yada. Physical. Oh, okay, now we got uh, we got all the physical characteristics again. All right. What is your imagination of this man who is a chef in a small town someplace, small village someplace? How, what kind of hair do you think he's got? <sighs> black hair. Go. Well, I, I would say I would say longer black hair. Yeah. Pulled back in a man bun. Go for it. Let's type all this out. In a man bun. Skin. Well, he, I, I kind of ran this for the for the rock gnome, so I'm I'm kind of leaving this on your side. Okay, so I would I would say probably. <sighs> See that's the thing, right? Like, do you want to go? I'm like, well, okay, he's got dark skin. Do you want right. to go? I'm, I'm not. I'm not so much worried about the the color of the skin, but I'm I'm thinking it it's very, um, what's the word? I want to I want to say because he's not very strong, so there there's not a lot of muscle mass to oh. to him. So, so it's kind of like a fragile. Easily skin easily cracks against the yeah like like that's like I'm trying to figure out how to I, I know it's how just, to describe write it in that. for weak for now just call it like weak skin for the time being yeah we'll call that weak eyes I I want to say I would I would have said I would have said bright blue but we did that for the we did that for the gnome like bright I green. don't okay we'll say bright well I mean you can pick any color really I mean you can. No oh, green, green works. I wonder what color the great the the great old one would be represented by. Maybe his eyes changed color when the power was bestowed upon him. I don't know. Just black eyes with white pupils. Oh no! Let's just let's just, <laughs> let's just stick with bright green. Um, Average human male height is what five eight to six four. So let's say let's say between five five. Five and a half feet and six and a half feet, and we'll roll the D twelve. Actually, what I'm thinking is, why don't we make it the five and a half feet? Because he's probably weaker and 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 less of a stature because he's had this power taken out of him. Well, we we rolled for the last one, so started off at five feet. Then why five feet? Because so he, sort of max, he can be six feet. Yeah, because 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 my, my he, th- he could be tall and he could be very tall and he, he lacks his strength. Yeah. But that that would be that would be a more interesting character, I think, if he were this tall. Should be an imposing figure, but, but he's be. he's frail and weak. Gotcha. And so and, yeah, and, and imagine some guy like six foot six foot five. That's just wasted away. Just just you, you think that he's he's nothing, but then he like then he's like throwing these spells out at you, and it's like, well, wait a second. All of a sudden, here comes an eldritch blast. Right, exactly. All right, so I'm going to say between five, five and a half five. and six and a half. D twelve. Roll the D twelve. Ooh, ten. Oh wow! So six three, uh, six four. Would that be six four? Well, yeah, because twelve inches on top of five six is going to be six six. So take two inches off of that would be six four. Yeah, six okay. four frail human being. I love it. Can we give him a cane? Um, when we get to the other stuff, just as something he kind of leans how about, on how about for a, his how about, strength. How about a limp? Maybe, maybe he's got. <gasps> What if he has like a peg leg? Eh, that's going a little far. Oh, you know, you know, you know what, you know who this reminds me of. Did you see? Um, what was it? Un- is it Unbreakable? No, I did not. But that's I, 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 I saw pieces. Mr. Of Glass. The, Mr. Glass. Mr. Glass. Like I feel, I feel like that would be like a great. What if he has? Um, 
a walker with with tennis balls on the bottom of it. I, I no, see no. your I see your hand motion. No, no, I'm no, like, no, is this no, the guy no, from Up now? Like, not, is that not the crutches? He's, a, he's the not, warlock from Up. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Not the crutches, but like the, those those like oh, the, the, the ones yeah, that have like, like a brace like on those their arm crutches. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's kind of like moving around on those things because he's lost all of his physical strength. I mean, come on, the guy's got a strength of five. I don't right know. I, I like the cane idea. I'm good with either of them. I'm thinking these things, and then he could turn one of them into his weapon somehow. Like, or like the cane could be his weapon. Like. It, it could be a staff. A, yeah, it could be a staff. That, that's even better. Okay. W- w- he needs the staff to walk, but he can get like little surges of strength that he can swing it and club somebody with it. Yeah. Okay, we'll go with that. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's, he's carrying a staff. Okay. So at six foot four, we can dumb down his weight to say, what, 175? So he looks, or one maybe 180, so he looks really, really thin. Because six foot six foot person is supposed to be like 200 and something pounds. So if we dumb him down to under two hundred pounds, he's going to look frail and not strong. I would, I would say probably thinner. I would say down to like one fifty, one forty. All right, I'm good with one fifty. One fifty, okay. One fifty. One forty nine. Just to be different. Just, just to be, th- yeah. Just so it's different. not a nice round number. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so he did something stupid and is as his quote unquote youth. Then yes. the punishment came, and then he finally right. came up. So twenty to twenty. Well, how about this? 18 to uh, to 24, roll a D6. Okay. Well, 17 to 17, and then and add to that, yeah. Three. 20. 20, perfect. He is 20. And we said male. Male. That's his gender. I right. like that. Fascinating. And we're not going to worry about, we're not going to worry about the notes about organizations and allies. Well, he's not going to really have much. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll add the backstory in. So we got, okay. So we got all the details yep. about this. Now we're on equipment. Equium Arabius. I'm really liking this. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm, yeah. This is so much fun. So equipment again. So, uh, light crossbow. Uh, so we're going to go with the simple weapon, right? Cause we're going to make the argument. He's not going to be strong enough to use it. A, a crossbow. So the quarter staff. Right. Do we have yeah, quarter staff. All right. The only other real option would be the club and I don't know. No, I think the quarter staff yeah. is um So here's here, here arcane focus. So here's the thing, right? This would be this, well this could be the staff then. That'll work too. So the the thing is you can also give him the components pouch where he has to constantly buy his components versus spending his money on the drink. I always like so I when when we were playing that game with Chris, I had the component pouch and I had to like constantly right. buy components right, for right. my spells. But yeah, yeah, we can do the arcane focus of his staff. Yeah, I think so. We can we can we can make it that after he lost his strength, the great one gave him a staff with ornate carvings on it, mm-hmm. and that's what his focus there. You yeah. go. I like that, I like that. Awesome. I think we gotta go scholars pack because this guy wasn't an adventurer beforehand. Right. And he probably did some studying after he lost his physical strength. Okay. Uh, so in the scholar's pack is a back it includes a backpack, a book of lore, a bottle of ink and ink pen, 10 sheets of parchment, a little bag of sand and a small knife. I think that works out because he probably went and looked up the great old one when he got out of his town into a bigger city. All right. So what do we got? Leather armor, any simple weapon and two daggers. So what? what would be an additional, we already, like we already have like the quarter staff, a um, sling. Because, I mean, the sling is something you can kind of get some power and let range out of well, while not being a very strong individual because it's all about momentum. What about, what about, because you wanted this for the other one, what about darts? Pop, I'm down for that, too. I saw the darts. I was thinking about it, but then I saw the uh, the sling, so I'm good with that. Okay, let's go darts. 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 Um, folk hero starting equipment. A set of artisan's tools. We already We already did. What did we do? Oh, we did the cook's. Cooks utensils already, didn't we? Oh, I guess we get something separate. As part of the folk hero. Oh, did we get uh, the the? Yeah, no, we got we got the cooking stuff from from being a, a warlock. Yeah. So so as the four folk hero, do you want do you want him to have the brewer supplies so he can make his own ale since he is, since he loves the the hard drink. Uh, it's a possibility. I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking. Just at, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, Caligula. Fire. Say that one more time. <laughs> no, because I screwed it up. The calligrapher. Calligrapher. There you go. Nailed it. The calligrapher. Well, he's got the book with the the ink and everything. So, as as a scholar, maybe maybe he uses. 
What about a cartographer's tools? Because I was thinking that too. Maybe he's mapping things out. Yeah, maybe. Let's go cartographer. Okay, let's do that. Cartographer's tools. Fantastic. He has he's a got shovel. An, an iron pot. Yep. A set of common clothes, 10 gold pieces. Yes. All right, so we're going to add all that starting equipment. So the 10 gold pieces is basically all he could scrape together after he left this town. Yes. We got, oh, my God, we got so much stuff. Got a couple of daggers. Yeah. And, cool. and scroll down. I think that's it. I want to I make sure he's wearing the leather armor, right? Yep. So I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to have him wielding the staff. Well, I want to use the arcane focus one, right? That's a good point. The staff for arcane focus. Okay. And that's it, guys. We, we've reached another character end. I think we have. Yeah, my goodness. So let's take a look at, we're going to view the character sheet in D&D &D Beyond. So, so a couple things. So let's, let's go over the ability score. So strength, strength is, is a minus three for the modifier. Because the strength score right now is a five. So, so he's we, really we not gonna, four. He's really not going to be able to hit anything if he tries to swing with his quarterstaff. Right. Absolutely. Um, so it was a four. We rolled a four. We got the plus one. So that's five. Dexterity is a plus one modifier. We rolled an 11, plus one for 12. Constitution, again, plus one. Um, intelligence was a 10. We rolled nine. So the plus one got it to, to 10, which... He's completely Even average now. here. Um, wisdom fourteen, because it was a, it was a thirteen. Yep. So the plus one got it to fourteen. To get, so that's a plus two, and charisma is a fifteen. Plus it was a two. fourteen plus one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Our lovely armor class of twelve. This guy's very very easy to hit. But then yes. again, most magic users are a little squishy. Yes. So that's that's why that's why range spells are really good for for this one. So so this will be nice. So Eldritch. Eldritch Blast is a plus four to hit. So that'll be good. Yep. And that'll, that'll be the 1d10. An unarmed strike, minus one. <laughs> if you hit, you do negative one damage. And a hit with the staff is, is a minus one. So you do, you do zero damage. This is great. Oh, oh, it's a negative one to hit. It's a negative one to hit, but you do zero Zero bludgeoning damage with a hand. With, with a hand, <laughs> it's, it's just kind of like smacking you. It's like ah, that did nothing. Um, At least it's a D eight plus three on the uh, on the on the hit the on the the staff. Well, if you if you do a two handed, oh. it's, it's it's a one it's a one D six. Is that one D six minus three? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one D six minus three. Oh, so if you, <laughs> you really you're really going to be sitting back and throwing that out. Well, I mean, come on. That's kind of what we were thinking about here too, right? Yes. We were looking at this and saying, he's a spellcaster. He, because of the way he rolled, he rolled weak. Well, we gave him Eldridge Blast, which is arguably the best possible spell he can have for somebody of his. He's going to be like spamming that Eldridge Blast button. He's oh just spamming goodness. it. So I just, I just, just, just to try it. So I rolled a D6 for the damage for the staff. <laughs> I rolled a one. With the minus three, so he did negative two damage, which which negative only rounds out to a zero. So it's not like he yes. add health, but it, it'd kind of be like, yeah, like tapping it, him with it, tapping him with the stick. Oh, I'm sorry, did you did you hit me? Um, <laughs> so this is gonna be very interesting. He is not this is gonna be fun. Not a strong strong guy. At, He's got this in a whisper though, right? Yeah. So let's look at the spells. Like dissonant whispers. That could be interesting. You see this like weird... But see, but see, he only has one spell slot. At this point. So he can only cast one spell. One spell. At this point. Yeah. Now I want to see. Because we had the question about is it a short rest or or a long rest? I want to see. Yeah, there it is. Short rest. Recover one pack magic slot. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, you so get it back. Yeah. So all you, short rest is literally just an hour. So after a combat, all he's got to do is kind of like rest up for an hour if he's out in the world. Right. If he's in a, in a dungeon, yeah, he's saving that for whatever boss he might come across. Yeah, for or sure. Or like, I have to. 
that's a, that's a good thing to know that you, yeah, you only need a short rest to get those. Yeah. Get Especially those on this level with that, that type of thing. And that's why I was think it was created that way is because you only got a couple of spell slots. Right. All In- right. Interesting. So this, this is, this has been a lot of fun. So we've got Iquium or the human, regular human warlock. Yep. I'm just, I'm, I'm waiting just, for it. What? Man. No, that is a reference to what we do in the shadows. When oh, I haven't seen that. When when Laszlo goes undercover as Jackie Daytona, regular human bartender, because <laughs> he's a vampire, so yeah. he's, he's a regular human, regular human vampire. So I'm calling Equium Aravius the regular human warlock. Yep, I like it. That's what he is. Actually, we we've got some we got some really great skills. We, we've got a plus four to survival, yeah, which is good. We got a plus four to animal handling, plus two to Arcana. I mean, minus three to athletics. I mean, he's got he's he's going to have some some serious issues doing any strength related. Well, with the monk, he's going to have to depend upon the monk doing any kind yes. of physical stuff. Well, yes. he kind of and and it'll be interesting because yeah. I think I think the monk has a lower intelligence if memory serves. Oh no, lower charisma. So right. it'll be, they'll kind of counteract each other a little bit. Yeah, because the the monk is the one that says things that get it shouldn't be said, get her in trouble. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. so this will be this will be interesting to see these two. In Co-op together. Co-oping. Yes. So so what's going to happen is my wife Catherine is going to DM Joe and I. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, thank you. Um, she is going to DM Fandelver and Blow the the shattered obelisk. Oh, you're gonna we're gonna do that one. Okay. Well it it, it really is it's the same. It's the the initial minds of Fandelver just kind of reimagined a little bit cool but it's basically the same same adventure so so she's going to dm us as a as a party um do we do we want to have a third person because so joe and i have talked about possibly creating a another first level character of a hybrid spellcaster melee weapon kind of which would be fighter. more like a cleric or a paladin, a paladin right. arguably possibly a um druid well druid i would think a little bit more on the the magical side actually yeah. i was thinking the uh the ranger mm-hmm. but uh anyway but yeah I'm thinking that at some point, maybe we should create a third character. Whether or not we get a third person to play, we, yeah. we can discuss that. But this way, if things are starting to look really crappy, Catherine can just bring them in to kind of save the day and then send them off on his way so that we don't die. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, because, I mean, to have a party of two would be a little difficult. It is a little difficult to run through that adventure with just a party of two. Yeah. So anyway, that is uh, Equium Avarius. Yes, Aravius. Aravius. Get it right. I'm sorry. It's I just met him. I know. Uh, Iquium Aravius. And uh, so like we were saying, we'll come back in two weeks with the creation of probably a cleric or a paladin or some other hybrid melee magical character. Yes. And then we're going to jump in to... How is this said now? The Mines of Fandelver? It's called Fandelver and Below. Oh, Fandelver and Below. The Shattered Obelisk. And over and below the shattered obelisk. Yes. So we will we will start that adventure and we will it won't even just be a one shot. We'll probably we, we, at least two sessions. It might it might be a, it might become a once a month thing that we just kind of gameplay these characters and, and watch them develop. Cause then we can because then we can talk about things like leveling up a character yep. and 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 other topics like that, so as so we can we can kind of and expand we can, that way. We can not stop during gameplay, but then we can take notes during gameplay and like the first session afterwards, talk about how things transpired in the gameplay that we wanted to bring out into conversation for the newer players. Absolutely, perfect, excellent. So thank you everyone for joining us today for character creation number two, our spellcaster. That's, I'm I'm very excited. So we will we'll be back at some point with with character three, and then we will start gameplay and and go through that. So we'll we'll do that probably on a monthly basis. And and again in between we'll we'll talk about the adventure, kind of kind of debrief and yep. and and talk about it as far as that's concerned. And we'll, we'll I'll hopefully be doing some more interviews and things like that. I'll definitely have a lot to talk about with Pax Unplugged. Absolutely. So That'll be at least an episode, if not oh, more on its man. own. I am I am stoked. But 
Stay tuned for all sorts of good things coming from 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 the podcast. Again, please, we would we would love if you support us. You can go on to legendslootandlore.supercast.com, help support the podcast, help us create these episodes. Um, you know, you can find us on social media. We're on Instagram, Threads, uh, Facebook, uh, the Tiki Talk, um, Facebook. I love it on Facebook. Yeah, you do because that's all. That's 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 my world. I let you handle the rest of it. I should probably let you handle Facebook too because you're probably better at it than I am. No, no, I, 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 you, you go nuts on Facebook, um, <laughs> and and if you really want, you can you can find us if you. We've I've got new stickers for the podcast with our with our kind of updated logo. I haven't even given you any of these, Joe. No, you haven't. So here, have some. Have have a bunch. Those are the yellow ones. And feel feel free to DM me on on Instagram, and I will send you stickers for for the podcast. Which one do you like better, the yellow or the blue? I was taking a poll. I think I like the yellow better, but it might just be because I'm used to the yellow and as it are to our, the way we've always started it. Yeah, I, I do like the blue, but you know what? I think the blue fire in the background kind of. Like the blue and yellow here creates the offset here. It's not really as offset. Right. Like the orange and the blue are complementary colors. So, yeah. so that goes well. And I, I think the I think the name stands out better in the white. But anyway. No, you're definitely right about that. Yeah. So free, Please free stickers. Out. Please ask us for free stickers. We will mail them out to you. Happy to do so. Um, anyway, again, thank you so much for listening. We, we look forward to the next episode on our next character creation. Have a great day. Y'all come back now. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Legends, Loot, and Lore. We hope you've enjoyed immersing yourself in the realms of legends, uncovering hidden loot, and delving into captivating lore. But the journey doesn't end here. For exclusive content, behind-the-scenes insights, and access to our community, visit legendslootandlore.supercast.com. There you'll be able to support the podcast, where you can join our Discord server for lively discussions and subscriber-only content, and connect with fellow enthusiasts. Stay connected with us on Instagram and Facebook at Legends Loot and Lore to continue on the quest. By following our social media channels, you'll be the first to know about upcoming episodes, bonus content, and exciting announcements. If you've enjoyed your time with us, we kindly ask you to rate and subscribe to this podcast. Your support means the world to us and helps us continue producing captivating episodes and embarking on new quests. Thank you for being a part of our journey. We're thrilled to have you by our side as we unravel the legends, uncover the loot, and delve deeper into the lore. Until next time.